Well, with the midterms only just a month away, we'll soon be off to the races. But overseas, Italy's race for a new prime minister ended in fanfare when Georgia Maloney became Italy's first female prime minister. But others were hesitant in their celebrations because of Maloney's party affiliations. Joining us now to discuss these very interesting international developments is senior counsel of the Lawfare Project, Gerard Felitti. Uh, Gerard, great to have you here. You know, um, Georgia Maloney made history. I mean, it was a really big deal. It's the first woman elected for prime minister there in Italy. Um, and yet many are finding issue with the party she represents, uh, the Brothers of Italy. Um, explain why the hesitancy in the background and why, you know, some are coming out really quickly and criticizing her. Sure. There, there are two parts. Good. First of all, thank you for having me. There, there are two parts to the background. One is that the party itself has its roots in proto-nationalist ideology in, in, in earlier in the 20th century, the same type of ideology that brought to power people like Mussolini and Hitler. So there is a concern that this nationalist ideology is something that is still pervasive, anti-immigrant, anti-foreigner, uh, a very domestic-oriented agenda. The other concern is exactly that, that we see the word nationalism or the, the concept that we have to put our citizens above the interests of uh, our entanglements with foreign or transnational bodies above those interests. Uh, that's also become a dirty word in international politics. So there's always a concern when you see someone focus on domestic issues, on the, the uh, powers, the economic ability of its country citizens to get ahead. That's the hesitancy. Although, you know, it's interesting, Gerard, in her background, I mean, she has been very much, um, you know, national security of Italy, protecting the borders. And then she's also talked very much about supporting Ukraine. Um, and she's very young, too. So there, there's some very interesting different layers to her as well. There absolutely are, but and I also think it may be a little bit of a misnomer to have this misconception or this worry that somehow nationalism or this is a far-right party that's a danger to, to anything. Because if you look at the policies that the Fratelli d'Italia party actually espouse, they are, while they are anti-immigrant, because that's a huge problem in Italy, unfettered illegal migration has been a significant concern for decades and has never been addressed by the Italian government, in part because of its obligations to the European Union. But apart from issues of immigration and, and tax cuts, which we all want to see, they have maintained the party and Maloney maintained their alliances with Europe, with America, with the rest of the world. So they're very much for uh, Ukrainian independence. They're against the Russian invasion. They support sanctions. They support continuing uh, ob their obligations to the international community. This isn't an isolationist government. This is just a government that wants to focus on the needs of its citizens first. You know, it comes as sort of part of a trend that we're seeing in Europe, as you know all too well, Gerard. I mean, Sweden, uh, England, uh, now, of course, Italy. What are your thoughts? Is this sort of part of a red wave of Europe? I think it is. That's a very way, good way to describe it. And it's the same thing that we're seeing in, in Latin America, we're seeing in South America, and even in the United States. There's a trend now, I think, to try to correct for some of the excesses of globalization, where people feel that they're not being heard or their interests are not being represented by these international or transnational bodies. You know, people in whether it's Sweden or Hungary or Italy, they're more concerned about their families being able to put food on the table, having access to jobs and education and health care and the economy improving. They're less interested in, in pursuing these globalized ambitions that have led to a decay in the economy and in people's standards of living. So, yeah, I think it's very apt, apt to describe it as a global red wave. And I want to turn now to American politics real quick with you before I let you go, Gerard. Your thoughts on where the midterms are headed. Uh, it's been interesting because even this week we heard from Biden's former press secretary, Jen Psaki. And she even said it was astounding to say that if it's a referendum on her old boss, President Biden, the Democrats will lose. Where do you see it headed, especially if you look at his, you know, lately very consistent low polling numbers? Well, Biden's low polling numbers, I think, are, are attributable a large fact to the state of the economy and the fact that he's simply not exciting as a leader. He, he was brought in as a caretaker. Uh, there, there were issues with COVID, with Trump. He wasn't elected to be exciting and to have an agenda. He was elected essentially to not screw things up. But things are getting screwed up, and Democrats down the ticket are going to experience the consequences. 
So the Democrats are going to lose seats, whether at the state level because of education issues in the economy or in Congress. There will be a sweep in, 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 in a lot of offices that bring to power Republicans. And a lot of this comes from people looking at the TV, seeing Joe Biden fumble and misstep, and seeing that they're not really motivated to go out and support the Democratic Party. And of course, uh, the elections, the midterms, very close, literally almost right around the corner. Gerard, thank you very much. Really interesting to have your perspective on all of these things. Thank you. Thank you for having me. No crooked, crooked establishment. establishment. None of that twisting, twisting the truth. truth. No talking down don't to me. Don't tell me how to think. Don't tell me how to think. Don't tell me how to think. I trust Newsmax. Newsmax. They don't tell, tell me, me how, how to think. think. They let, let me decide. Newsmax. Real news. For real people.